Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. In this video we're going to continue what we went over in the last video, that is creating a dungeon crawler. Move over to the story here. So building on our last video we're, going to, we're looking at three main mechanics here. We've got a health system, we're tracking something over time, we've got a, some type of map, a maze we're going through, and in this video we're adding an encounter system to that. We're going to run into something as we make our way through the maze. However, before we can move forward with what was set up in the last video, we need to start to think about our project overall and as a whole. Since we have numerous variables, we need to think about having some sort of initialized passage as a place where all the initial values are set. So we have them and we can set them all and then use them throughout the story. So going back over to the code here, you see I have a init passage. And all it does is set a number of variables to values I will need later in the story. See, we're setting health, to, health here to 100. We're setting up our map array, our position X, position Y, and then our attack number, which is the number that's going to be used for the chance of an attack by the group, which I'll go over later as we get to it. And you notice here, I'm using the display macro to include the init passage right within the first start passage here. So the very first thing that happens is we're displaying calling the passage of init and then all of those variables are being set so from the start passage on all of our values are set and we can use them. So we also need a better way to figure out our position in the map. If you remember in the last video we were using position X and position Y and we were just showing where we were for each different variable. So while using them can be helpful, it would be better if we could see actually see the whole map at a time. Similar to like a roguelike system where you can see the map and you're moving along. So to do that, we need the four macro and sugar cube. So we can move through the different items in each array. So remember, our map array is actually a two-dimensional array. It is an array of arrays. So starting with the top array using a for loop with the four macro, we go through each item in that array and because each of those is its own array we go through its own items as well. As we move through these arrays we also want to test each value. If it's a zero, that is if it's an edge of our map or somewhere we can't move, we want to write a hash. If it's a one, we want to write a period showing we can move there. If it's a two, we mark that as an E, that'll be the exit. And if the position is the same as, the, as position X and position Y, we write a P, that's our current player position. So to show you that in code, it's unfortunately a little bit complicated. And the reason for this is to start with this no break line macro. The reason why I have to do this is that the print macro when used introduces a break line. That is when you print it automatically moves to the next line. So as we're moving through first the number of entries in the map array, that is four, an initial value set to zero, to the full length, move through each item in the array. As you're moving through the array for each item, move through its own array. So you see that here. The index value is i, and as i increases and we move through up through the length of the array, we're also moving through the length of each array within map area or map array. And that's k. So we have i and k. And these are the four tests I just said. So if position X and position Y are equal to K and I, print the letter P. That's the current player position. Remember, of course, that in our map array and in this extended example, those are inverted. So normally they would be I would be X and K would be Y. But in this example, so we can see it easier, I've inverted them. And then we see two HTML escape characters. Now the reason I did this is because hash means something within the understanding of, of the wiki script, a hash is sort of a numbering system. So I'm using the HTML equivalent, and I've just looked these up online, of hash and period so there's no confusion. And of course the last one here is E. So if we see the number 2, that's the exit. So as we're moving along in the map and we see E, we want to aim for that. And the very last thing here is a break line. So I stopped the, prints, the print macros from using break lines each time and then within the loop I have a break line for each line processed. So we process a row, 
we break line, process array, we break line, so we see the array printed as it looks in the code. So it would look just like this when we see it, of course without the commas and the brackets. So the last thing we wanted to add mechanic-wise to our extended example here is after we have a health system, we have a map system, we want an encounter system. So I'm borrowing the code for the encounter system using in this example from an older video I created as a recreation of the groove from Zork. So the way the groove works is that as you progress through the darkness, it will eventually attack you. There's a random chance that increases per step taken up to 10 and then it will attack you if it hasn't done it already, and then it resets. So every step we take, there's a random but increasing chance of having a Gru attack. But it will always eventually attack within up to 10 movements. Once it has attacked, it will reset. So let's take a second and look at the Gru macro. Now I'm wrapping all this, this first chunk here, in a silently. That means don't display any output, and also condense it all down. So if you've seen my earlier video on creating an encounter system, this code will look familiar. But of course it's written in a different story format. The original one was written in Harlow, this is written in Sugarcube, so it looks a little bit different. But the mechanics are still basically the same. And the first thing we do is check attack number. If it's less than or equal to zero, we set it back to 10. And then we immediately subtract one from it. And then, because this is Sugarcube and it doesn't have a built-in random macro, we have to use JavaScript's math.round and math.random calls. So we do that here. Well, we get a random number that's rounded to a whole number, and we set that to chance. And then the very last thing we check to see if chance is equal to 1. If we got a, if we got a 1 within those random chance of 1 to whatever the attack number is, so potentially 1 to 10 or 1 to 9 or 1 to 8, and, you know, decreasing, which increases the chance of us getting attacked, if we get a 1, the Gru attacks, we lose 10 health. And we see that right here. The attack number is set to 0, which means the next time this passage is run, it will be reset to 10. And we see health, which was set in the initialized passage, is decreased by 10 each time. So start at 100, and we can get attacked up to 10 times. So let's, just, let's see what this looks like in practice. And so there you have a printed out ASCII map using different characters of our array. And we see P is where we are. Our current health is 100 and we can move east. And we see each time we move, the P moves too because we're checking each time we print the map using the map array using our four macros where we are. Position X, position Y. And if those are equal to the lines that we're printing, it prints the P. And notice, of course, that the E is down here, all the zeros return to hashes, all the ones return to periods. So we move east, south, and the Gru attacks us, of course, and we lose 10 health. Go south again, east, 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 east. We see get attacked one more time. South, south, attacked one more time. Oh no, will we make it? Will we make it? And we see now the change to exit. So let's take a second and go and look at the map system that's now been changed. So to take the map into account, I've changed our four directional conditional statements here. Each one originally just had these, few, these two first lines and an end f. I've now added an else if macro within each if macro statement because we need to check if 2 occurs, if there's an exit anywhere, and if it is, to display a link to the exit. So to finish this, if we click on exit, we escaped and we ended up with 60 health. So let's restart. So what happens if we run out of health? Well, we can just keep moving, because we know eventually we will get attacked.
And we're down. Oh no, we were eaten by the Gru. <laughs> okay, so closing that, let's move back to our code here. Now that we've seen both the death ending and the exit ending. So what we just saw was actually the check within health. All of the health functionality, all of the mechanics that had to do with health, I put within the health passage. And we saw the pretty standard printing of the value of the variable health, but I also put a silently here in that it doesn't show any output and is condensed to check to see if health is ever less than or equal to zero. If it does, immediately go to the passage death. So the go-to macro is different than the display macro we've been, I've been using extensively here. The display includes another passage. Go-to immediately directs to another passage. Skips anything else, go to that place immediately. So if the health, the value of the variable health is ever less than or equal to zero, we go to the passage death, which is what we saw. Oh no, you were eaten by a Gru. Otherwise, we continue to show the value of the variable health, and we just keep going. And you notice too, each time location was getting shown. Because in our map system, which is basically driving everything here, we're displaying the contents of the passage location, we're displaying the contents of the passage crew, we're displaying the content of the passage health. In each case, it used a different mechanic that we went over. We have our map, which is our location, we have our counter system, which are grew, and the last thing is the health. Now the reason why the health is last is because the Gru, if it attacks us, can just decrease the health. And so the last thing we want to show is actually whatever value of health is the current value at the end of an attack. So we show the map, we check the attack, and then we finally show whatever health has happened. And then we present the full choices to the user to move north, east, south, or west, or if there's an exit nearby within any cell around where we are to allow the user to go to the exit if they want. And it's assuming, of course, that they still have health, because otherwise, within the health passage, we would have encountered the death passage. And so there we have, actually, a pretty good example here of a dungeon crawler system. Now, of course, we can add different things. We could add an inventory system. We could pr spruce up our map. We can make it larger. We could change our encounter system, introduce new monsters. An easy way to do that, for example, would be, be to introduce a passage that handled all of those mechanics, those different encounter systems, and just have each monster be a different passage of its own, and then just display them, include them as we needed them. We could also include weapons if we wanted, or treasure system. We just put our treasure on the map. We could even go a step farther and make all of this dynamic, of course. However, that would require a lot more work than these current examples. But we could always introduce a dynamic map, dynamic enemies, dynamic treasures, dynamic health, any number of dynamic systems we can place upon this overview of how to create a dungeon crawler-like system using an array of arrays and checking an X position and a Y position as we move along and combining that with an encounter system that just attacks us on some random increasing chance. Similar to how a lot of number of RPGs work with an overworld system where you inevitably get into a fight the more you walk. And so there we have a pretty good overview of a dungeon crawler system. Thanks for watching.